I'm Kitty, and this podcast is mine, Missing, Murdered, Unidentified in New England. I cover cases from the New England states of Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Each episode takes place over the years of January 1st, 2010 to December 31st, 2020. And based on sources, some episodes will be long and others will be short, as these cases don't generally have much information available. All of the research, scripting, opinions, and mistakes herein are my own, and I will offer updates and corrections as needed. I do not trigger warn for wounds as they are a necessary part of the narrative. I will trigger warn for such topics as animal death, domestic violence, suicide, etc. as needed. Now with that, please listen in as I tell you about January 2012. Corey Kane was born on May 26, 1988, and performed 14 backflips in a row at his mom's 50th birthday party. Corey was kind, sweet, and would give you the shirt off his back. Corey occasionally stayed with his mom, Joan, in Worcester, though he generally lived with his girlfriend in Wales, Connecticut. Corey was well-loved, enjoyed bicycles and baseball, and always had a good word to say. Corey was outgoing, enthusiastic, getting his life back on track, and would never hurt a fly. Corey would always put others first and was always smiling and laughing. The youngest of four children, Corey's sister Trina gained custody of Corey when she was 22 and Corey was just 14. Corey had a daughter, Anaya, who is now a preteen and was only two when Corey was killed. Corey was trying to regain custody of his daughter and his girlfriend helped him to get a job and was a major positive influence in his life. Corey was going to start a new job the next day. He was going to be a cook in a restaurant. Corey was just 23 when someone driving a car or a box-type truck struck and killed him on January 3rd, 2012. It was determined to be a box-type truck because of the mirror and the injuries that Corey suffered. He suffered mid-torso to top of head injuries and defensive wounds. Corey was walking along Route 19 by the Wildlife Sanctuary and was found in front of 138 Stafford Road. Corey was found by a passing motorist and was likely struck between 1.30 and 4.48 a.m. on January 3rd, 2012. Police are still trying to determine which side of the road Corey was walking on when someone ran into him. Corey was likely walking to his girlfriend's house as it was closer to work when someone ran him down. There was no evidence of a vehicle at the scene. Corey was brought by ambulance to Harrington Hospital. Phone records were not checked, even though Corey's phone was found smashed nearby. Corey had cocaine and alcohol in his system. Law enforcement are still looking for people who saw Corey walking on Route 19 between 1.30 and 4.48 a.m., and police didn't release where the house was located or what time Corey left on his journey home. Corey's hit-and-run death was like losing a child to Trina, and there was a candlelight vigil held at Southbridge as Corey was a seven-year Southbridge resident. If you have any information leading to the capture of who killed Corey, please call one 413-505-5993, 1-413-245-7222-1-508-347-3352, or text SOLVE to 274-637. Trigger Warning, Suicidal Actions and Ideations Jason J. Real was born September 9, 1978, and is known as the sweetest person on earth. Jason is an artist and poet. He is very caring and sweet. Jason is quiet, kind-natured, free-spirited, pretty timid, keeps to himself, spent time in New Hampshire and Florida and Maine, and volunteered at a food bank in Brunswick. Jason is a good uncle who drew pictures for his sister's children when he was on his medications. And when he was off his medications, things began to crumble. Jason lives with schizophrenia and was not taking his medications when he was last seen and was said to be extremely agitated. The schizophrenia also makes Jason delusional and paranoid. Jason has made multiple attempts at ending his life, including slitting his wrists, leading to scars on both of his wrists. 
He once overdosed on prescription medication and jumped from a car speeding along the highway. Jason is missed dearly by his sister Angela, his uncle Ken, his aunt Tammy, and his mom Diane. Doug, Jason's dad, now deceased, last saw Jason on January 12th, 2012, and called Brunswick PD after a few days without contact. Jason was 33 when he went missing from Brunswick, Maine, and would be 44 if still alive today. On the last night Jason was seen, he had spent the night with Doug, talking about government conspiracies at Doug's place. He said he needed to go for a walk after a restless night. Jason talked about government conspiracies and got out of bed at 6 a.m. and continued to talk about those theories. Doug asked Jason to take his medication and call his doctor, and Jason responded with, I can't do that. Jason said he had to go for a walk and left his keys, wallet, glasses, and medications behind on his kitchen table of his Federal Street apartment. Someone with psychosis is disconnected and totally obsessed with their delusions, and Jason was delusional at the time he disappeared. Jason used his debit card at Rite Aid, now Walgreens, on January 18th, 2012 to pick up medication. Jason's medications were found unopened in the medicine cabinet. Jason was caught in the classic cycle of, you feel good, so you stop taking your medications, and then the symptoms come back, or where he would feel sick because of the side effects, and then become too frustrated to start again. January 25th, 2012, Angela reported Jason missing, and Jason's EBT and debit cards have not been used since Jason vanished. Two disability checks were found uncashed in Jason's mailbox. Whether it's due to his schizophrenia and being paranoid, or if he was just precautious, Jason wouldn't have left his apartment unsecured the way he did, according to family. Jason did take out a small amount of money at an ATM, though that amount is unknown. Jason is not a public threat and lives in shelters or on the street or potentially with unknown people or persons. Doug, Jason's dad, died on June 8, 2014, in his sleep, heartbroken, depressed, and tired, not knowing the fate of his son. Jason is 5 foot 9 to 6 feet tall, 170 to 200 pounds, has brown hair that is most likely closely shaved to his head, or he could be rocking a bald look. He rocks a goatee, or he could be baby-faced. He has either hazel or brown or blue eyes. Jason has a large Chinese dragon tattoo on his left forearm. Jason was last seen wearing a round brim, brown or tan hat, a green, two-tone North Face jacket, jeans, dark shoes, dark gloves. This is the look that Jason sports most often. Jason was known to take it off for a day or two, but not without contact. Jason stopped his medications about three weeks prior to his disappearance, and according to Jason's journals, he'd been hearing a little girl's voice that he believed to be a hallucination, and Jason was hearing voices intensely. Jason couldn't really talk to Doug because Doug didn't understand where Jason was coming from. Jason has scars on both of his wrists and scars above his right eyebrow. Jason smokes cigarettes. According to Doug, Jason, each year around Christmas, decides to go off his medications. He decides he can manage his schizophrenia without them, and somewhere between November and January, Jason will get into trouble. The first time Jason tried to self-harm around others, he jumped from a moving van around Christmas time, was brought to the hospital with road rash, and diagnosed with schizophrenia, and was quoted as saying, I can't do this anymore, prior to jumping. There have been numerous searches, tips, and sightings. Dogs and search teams looked through 60-plus acres of wooded area behind Jay's apartment complex. There have been potential sightings in Brunswick Walmart, Hilton Garden Inn in Auburn, downtown Brunswick on Congress Street, and in Portland, Maine. No sightings equated to finding Jason, though. Jason's mom, Diane, has visited homeless shelters in Portland, Maine, looking for Jason. Doug had several theories about what happened to Jason, including abduction, 
disconnecting his life and starting new and completing suicide as the voices told him to go somewhere and kill himself, but no body had been found. Hope has faded to find Jason alive. Brunswick PD and Misard, the main search and rescue dogs, searched a wooded area between Bath Road and Route 1 behind a New Meadows Hotel at 393 Bath Road to Bodo and Pines, Maine. Doug thought of the Androscoggin River between Tropsham and Brunswick, but it was clogged with ice when it thawed, it went directly into the Atlantic Ocean. So if that is where Jason is, recovering him is unlikely. No comparisons have been made between Jason and unidentified persons. If you have any information, please call 1-207-725-6620 or 1-207-725-6623, extension 163. And remember, recovery is something you have to do every day. Always prepare for the storm. Take your medications and reach out for help. You are not alone. If you have any questions, concerns, complaints, please email me at minepodcast at gmail.com. All one word and mine is spelled with two M's, two I's, one N, one E. Please include what your message is about on the subject line. Later, y'all.